So, um, early this year, I was um, in a relationship. <laughs> I, was, I was dating this beautiful Shori, and uh, one day I decided to go over to their place to visit her. And, um, you know, we have these great moments, yeah? You, you all know that, those great moments that you have together with your Shori, yeah. So, <laughs> we were there, um, um, we were watching television, we were watching some vines, when suddenly, um, <laughs> suddenly, oh, I skipped a part. I was about to render this relationship uh, void due to the opaque nature. <laughs> and you guys are just about to find out why. So um, we are in the, she, she was staying at the servants' quarters, so we were there watching vines, we were having a good time. And um, we were expecting no one because her mama just left with her grandpa. <laughs> They're going to take the grandpa to the hospital. So we were just the two of us, you know. So um, uh, I, I hear a car just pulling over by the gate, and I ask her, are you expecting somebody? And she's like, no. And then this person opens the gate without knocking, <laughs> as if he was told that, you know, Richie was there. Comes straight to the window and... And then our eyes meet. Now, I know this guy. This is my Shori's ex. And our eyes meet and... First thing that comes to my mind is um, we are either gonna talk as men <laughs> or we are... Uh, we're just gonna brush the issue, you know, when you're an ome, like, ah, and then they just walk away. Or, we're gonna fight. Because if this guy decides to fight me, uh, I'm also gonna fight back. I looked at his eyes and they were full of rage. And, you know, this guy heads to the kitchen in the main house goes and grabs a knife, yeah, and comes to attack me. Now, me, for me, a knife was never in my equation, <laughs> yeah? So he goes and he comes back with a knife and he actually attacks me, yeah? And everything happens really fast. Next thing you see is blood all over the SQ. And this guy actually realized that he had done something wrong. You know, letting your emotions get the better part of you. You don't know what you're doing, yeah? You're just wild. And upon realizing that there was blood, like, all over, he stopped. And for me, it was like, hey, let me escape. So I escape and run to the main house. I lock the front door. I go and I lock the back door. And then I go to the uh, toilet and... I'm looking at myself in the mirror. You know, I, I had a very clean body, yeah? But now uh, I look at myself. Well, the adrenaline uh, made me not feel the pain, but I'm looking at myself and I'm like, wow, now how will I explain these cuts, yeah, to my dad? <laughs> how will I explain the fact that I got myself into this situation? <laughs> so, um, I look at myself and once I, I, I feel like, how will I explain these cuts to my dad? I'm like, no, I won't call my dad. Let me call my two very close friends. So I call them and um, we go to, uh, they, they arrive at the hospital where I was. It was just a few um, meters from uh, that estate. And um, uh, they teach me, the doctors teach me, and uh, once uh, that is done, as I'm waiting to get discharged, I sit down and 
actually I realized that all this time I was oblivious of the fact that God was there. And you know, I, I had a sharp pain here, and you know when I touched it, I felt like it was just a few inches, yeah, um, from my spine, and I shed a tear. Now, I shed a tear because I acknowledged the fact that God had manifested um, his limitless power to me because, you know, I'd be dead or I'd be on a, in a wheelchair, you know, who knows. But because of his limitless power, his limitless greatness, I am, a, I am alive here sharing this testimony today, yeah? You know, many, many of us wait for that time where when they're, they're in, in a very huge mess, yeah? And that is when you actually remember God. But we should all acknowledge the fact that we experience God's greatness every day, yeah? Even as we are seated here, God is great. Every day when we wake up in the morning, God is great, yeah?